Now it's time to conduct some research. The research for this particular essay will not be as extensive as for other projects that you will write in the future, but they are specific. So let's get started. First, we need to document the film, book, screenplay, novel, stage play that we have used. There are several different methods for this. If you used a free PDF that you obtained through a Google search or through our wonderful librarians, I would type into Google the name that I'm looking for, the definitive script, and free PDF. Magic words. This appears. I'm going to copy this URL. Back over to the project I created in EasyBib. Paste that URL. Allow it to search for a second. I found it. And now I click on this. And you can see all this stuff showed up in the citation that I don't need for my citation. I have the URL. So the viewer could go and find this URL. And I don't need any of that. So I'm going to change the information in all of these boxes. And for our purposes, for this essay, all I'll require is the title, who wrote the screenplay, I mean the stage play, and the website title is Folger, folger.edu. Here is the URL if anybody needed to find it. For our purposes, for this essay, we don't need to find the electronically published dates. We are fine with that information. We complete the citation. The citation shows up here. And because we've included all the information that's required for this essay, we ignore that information and the citation looks fine. Next, we find the definition for the archetype we have selected. Remember that the assignment page shows an overview of different types of archetypes. But for your essay, you will want a definition, not a dictionary definition, but an actual article definition. This is the one we're going to use. And I will make sure that I cite that in EasyBib using that same formula that we just used. And now I have my definition, the information for which I will copy paste into a notepad, add the citation, and save in that folder I completed on my desktop so that I now have on my desktop all that information. It is at this point that I always like to pause and look at pretty pictures. That's just me. You do it your way. But after I have researched all the cross T's and dotted I's, I want to look at some pictures. Now I'm going to make a decision with my essay. What kind of pictures I'm going to be using? Do I want to use classical pictures that are in black and white? Then all of them need to be in black and white. Do I want to use color images from current productions? If I want to do that, then they all need to be in color. They don't have to be from the same exact production, but they need to be in color. If they're in black and white, they're in black and white. You know what? There's a way to take a, black, a color picture and make it into black and white. I know. It's photoshopping. Even I can do that. But I picked something. This is a nice image of Hamlet deciding whether to, to kill himself or not. And that's a neat image. And if I want to, you do not need to cite images for this essay. But I do want to save it. I opened the image in a new tab. And I'm going to save it to that folder of images that I created on my desktop. I may use it, I may not use it, but I'm going to save it in there. Of course, if I was going to use this one for the actual essay, I would crop it. It would not nearly be this big, but that's an example. One of the things I mention in other instructions is the necessity of finding qualitative analysis that is sharp, crisp, and that can be seen. What in the world is this? If this appeared in an essay, it is so dark, I see somebody upset, and I see somebody holding somebody, but I would not know anything else. It is such a dark image. It's also a teeny tiny image. And when I try to enlarge that image, it's going to look blurred, dark. I'm not going to have one clue what it is. So we're going to be careful when we pick images to make sure that they are crisp and sharp and high resolution. This is very low resolution. This is high resolution. 
Now I'm ready to get some study guide help in planning the content of my essay. Study guides are wonderful and they are plentiful. And the idea is to find one that works really well with me and understand that a study guide is a study guide that was created by somebody. It is not a definitive article written by a critical source. It's a study guide. Let's take a look at one of those study guides. I love SparkNotes. I think that SparkNotes is a wonderful resource to help me understand difficult literature, understand different types of writing sequences. It's wonderful. The problem with SparkNotes is that it's a depository. People have contributed content to SparkNotes. They are unnamed people. If they had written an article that was named, that would be fantastic, but they didn't. Instead, they wrote general content. So while it is a fantastic resource, resource for study to understand characters, to understand why they're doing what they're doing and the contribution that they make to the particular story that we are studying. They are not articles written by specific people. So the citations for SparkNotes certainly need to go in our work cited through EasyBib, but it comes down as a study guide, not as an article. If I wanted to study Gertrude, the mother. I would get my ideas from SparkNotes, but I would have to find my actual quoted citations from an article. So I typed in Gertrude as a tragic hero. She's the mother of Hamlet, who of course dies. Where are the free articles about her? And I see this one anytime I see an EDU, I'm happy because it means that it's published at a in an educational setting, and that is always a legitimate source. So I click on this one, and I see that there's an author, which is always wonderful. I create the citation immediately. If I open it and I looked at it, I make sure that it's included in my citations. And now I have an article specifically on the topic that I am seeking, and it's a legitimate article written by an author and published in an educational journal. And I can look through here and find the information that I need, quote it, and add it to my notes that I have completed in this handy folder that I created on my desktop. I get whatever information from that article, make sure that I have her name so I can quote anything from the article in my essay, paste that into a little notepad, and save it in my folder. And when I've conducted this preliminary research with a citation for the text, the film, the book, the literary material, I have found the definition of the archetype that I want to use. I've documented in EasyBib the study guide that I'm using. If I wanted to use a study guide from SparkNotes or CliffsNotes or wherever, that is also cited in my EasyBib. I have found an article that is a definitive article by a titled author about the hero that I selected. And now I'm ready to work on my proposal which won't take very long, and it's important that we complete that document properly.